How are you executing at those levels? How, right? That's the, the secret sauce of training, right? I don't care if you can identify the levels, show me how you're executing. So, um, to me it was like, they're gonna pull this eventually, I just wanna make sure I'm there for it, and how I play those setups is I size into very small size, and when that move looks like it's gonna happen on the tape, I'll dabble in on the confirmation and then slowly cover into that watch. Everyone needs to also accept this fact, your stop loss is not your risk, your size is. A lot of people like to be like, well, I have a, I have a stop here. I don't care, what if it up loss? You think that stop's, gonna, that stop's gonna work, your size is your risk. 45, so nice little overlap there, always something that we wanna look for. So 79, 88 overlap with that 50. This is a very confluent zone and a gap fill um, that we have not filled yet. So this is going to be the ideal zone. We're gonna have to adapt if we don't pop higher into those levels, but that is the plan for today, guys. Oil is very, very straightforward. That's the main plan, or the main trade that I'm going to be looking for earlier into the session. Um, and Q, I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more observant and adapt along the way, but that is the plan for today, guys. I hope everybody's clear on this. And um, yeah, I'll be uploading this recording per usual. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to shoot them off in the Discord, but that is the setups for today, guys. It's going to be CL short, once we pop into 98 to 100 and NQ, ideal short around 745 to the 800. I thought I saw your Audi pull out. No. Or your car's here. We got new cars in there. Oh, well, you guys always the new whips. <laughs> you can't give probably you probably sold the other guy. You do, bro. Good. Just Why? ISM got hosed on that morning move, made it back on the NQ. There you go, bro. So full size. I gotta get the new gear. Yeah. <laughs> Say less. Yeah, how are you doing? What's up? Working on getting the IGs back for you guys. <laughs> oh yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> How am I gonna come Trade club, baby. Right here, right here. Right here. This is where it's all about. What does it say in the back? Ice, ice, ice. 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 What does mine say? Anti retail, 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 retail trade. Retail. <laughs> what does mine say? <laughs> <laughs> Driving's another level. Bro, it's a whole nother level. Well, dude, it, you cannot look at your phone. No. Like, for real. People like, I don't look Dude, I, I'm going straight, and I'm and this lady's pulling out in like a Cadillac truck, and I'm driving my dad's Yukon XL. Things like seven thousand miles, right? Down, bro. And this lady's taking. I'm like, there's no way she's gonna continue to turn. Like, there's just oh, no, she, I'm, yeah. she's, she's going. Dude, she's going. And I'm gonna fucking dude. I literally had to swerve the big thing. Dude. I'm like, I hope there's nobody in my lap in my line spot. Hope the car because, pulls together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're gonna get. I'm like, I have that Midwest road courtesy, bro. Dude. Everyone sends it on the road here. Dude, it's, it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Trade Club. For those of you that don't know, this is David Greenberg. He is the 
president of Greenberg Capital. I was a trader on the floor of the New York Mercantile Exchange, where the world's oil was traded, on the COMEX Exchange, where all the world's gold was traded. I was president of the third largest clearinghouse of the exchange that traded and cleared local traders, such as yourself, it's the independent traders. And I was on the board of NYMEX. And when we grew the exchange for, from 800 million and then finally took it for an IPO of 12 and a half billion. <laughs> What's up, man? I'm Jack. Hey, well, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I hear you're a great trader. <laughs> Not as good as this guy, but I'll take no, it. You know, that when we're with him, nobody's as good as this guy. <laughs> you know, it's the right way. I'm going to teach you how to kiss ass, too. <laughs> he's like a machine. Well, you know, he, he gets like up five hours before me, so he's got, he's got the, you know, he's got the extra year every decade, <laughs> right. the extra month every right, year. They add it all together. It's amazing what can happen. You trade commodities as well? Yeah, futures. I don't really trade like oil. I mean, I occasionally trade oil. Mostly, 90% of my trades are ESMQ. I will look at the Russell and the Dow, but I don't often. I used to trade them more, but with my concentration, like it's too hard for me to trade so many products. So I just Good. stick to the same. I'm an expert at trade. Yeah. I mean, I traded crude only. I never went to natural gas. I never went to even if natural gas was busy. I would do it because you become an expert because every market has it's like its own person, has its own moods, has its own mood swings, its own yeah. actions. And if you can become an expert with two or three, you know, that really are volatile enough. And I like I like futures a lot because it moves just so differently. Yeah. You know, and also the leverage I think is more. Yeah, the, the leverage you're allowed to use is pretty crazy. Well, you know, yeah. said during the trading day on the floor, there was no intraday margin. So you could you could you could have fifty thousand your dollars in your account and trade four million dollars of crude oil. You buy thousands of crude oil at the time. And that was what was so scary about being a clearinghouse. Because I didn't know if like some guy, you know, bought a thousand crude. Because it wasn't real time. We only found in the beginning we found about it the next day. And then towards the end we found about it after the market closed. So if you bought a thousand lots and went home a thousand lots, okay, I wouldn't know about it till till the end. Oh, wow. It's kind of so, nice though, right? So, <laughs> nice, no, it's nice for you guys. Right? It's, not good. it's not good for the clearing house. Right? You know? well, I mean, that was really cool. Well, actually, when we traded negative, what was that? March of no, no, two no, years ago? Yeah. yeah. That was a play for Taz, okay, trading and settlement yeah. that we invented. No, we didn't invent We put it in. We fought it before, before, but ICE was putting it in. So what happened was, it technically did, everyone's like, it went negative, but the next day was settlement day, and it settled at $10.75. So there was never a storage problem. So what happened is the last trading day on the front month, there's like nothing being traded. I would trade that day to the last second, be shaking out of my boots because if we got stuck with it, we owned it, right? So, you know, one time I got stuck with it and the market, I remember, it closed at $17.15. I get stuck by an out trader, I'll explain that another time, but with like 10 lots. So I'm calling around, so I get my friend that's on the Hess desk. He goes, we'll take it out at 15. I'm like, great, you're gonna take it out at 7.15, 17.15, it's so nice. He goes, no, 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 we're gonna take it out at $15. I'm like, that's over twenty thousand dollars when you get out of a trade. I was trying to make like two hundred bucks on. It. He's like, not my problem. <laughs> he goes, How big is your pool? You know. Uh -huh. So I'm like, you know what? I had to hit the bid, but I would take two or three days off after that trading day because my mind would be so fried. Yeah. From the pressure. Yeah. Um, but so that was the last trading day, second last trading day. So you were able to, you know, if you if you push the market down on very little volume and buy tabs of trading at settlement, and you knew it was going to be settling at thirty dollars under, okay, the odds of it opening up another ten dollars lower was slim because you only needed like a thousand lots to bring it back up. But you could, they bought all this stuff at trading at settlement. So I know the CFTC is, you know, look, still looking into that. When did uh, the CME buy NYMEX? That was a great sale. It sold about twelve billion dollars. Yeah. Um, so we went public for 12 billion, and then we had a problem that our systems weren't handling the volume, so we had to go to the blowback system, and then we were net, we were stuck with not with CME. So then CME made a play for us, and we're like, oh, at the right price, this guy Richie Schaefer set it up and just sold you know the, the trading rights over. So we got another nice payday from that. And at one time, the NYMEX was worth more than the whole regular CME. So there's just a lot of trip, you know, a lot of political, and you know, I was on the board for seven years on the executive committee, and I was there for that whole thing, you know. When, what what years was that? Um, it was I started in 2000, I ended in 2007. So that sale happened in 2007. Oh, wow. You guys yeah. Peak, 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 uh, peak I sophomore right college in the yeah. 07, checking out those screens. What the fuck is going on? Oh uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs>
tried to go long a pullback here, stopped out, and then I reshorted. I actually threw a long right here, and then I covered it. Like I was like, nah, fuck it, I'm not. Like I don't want to chase this thing. Cause like I was like, yo, this is a chase move, and then. Obviously, it well, I knew when we were like five, so these are five minute bars. Like yeah. when we were one, two, three, four, five, there was seven, eight bars down. I was like, that's Fuck it. going yeah. lower. I mean, if we go 40 minutes straight down of selling, I'm always paying attention to that direction. Sure. Yeah, it was a nasty sell off this morning, no, no doubt. That was Like that shit will look like it's moving a lot of points, but that might just be like 20 points. Like that, those whole three candles, you know? But like you'll see during different times of the day, like for example, like when we have the afternoon, these are gonna move much slower. And then moving into the close, they're gonna pick up again. But it's just a good thing to keep an eye on. It's another one of them things.